Hello friends, we are still not employed by Fang Company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do maximum product sub array. This is a very popular problem on lead code. And if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, LinkedIn, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Bloomberg, Facebook, and Uber. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. Okay, so this is a lead code medium problem, and as mentioned, a very well liked problem on lead code. Basically, we are given an integer array called nums. And we need to find a continuous non-empty sub array that has the largest product and we need to return the product. Uh, we are also given the definition that what a sub array is that is basically a continuous sequence inside the any given array. And let's try to understand this problem with, the, with an example. So I have broadened this example over here and basically we are trying to find the maximum product sub array. So a sub array that contains the maximum product in this case this is a negative value and that changes the dynamic equation so in this case the product of these two elements th that is a sub array is actually going to be six and all the other sub arrays they are always going to have lesser values than six so in this case as the answer we need to return six that that is the maximum product sub array we can make for this given input array and this is what the problem is asking us to do so first let's see that what is going to be the brute force way to solve this problem well, the brute force way to solve this problem is that we are asked to find the maximum product sub array, right? So if we are asked to find something of a sub array, why don't we check every single sub array, see that what is the product we can make and find the maximum amongst that. So like do the baby steps. So what we are going to do is we are going to keep on iterating over every single sub array that we can make. Uh, we are going to see that uh, we are going to have a variable called answer and uh, in the answer we are only going to store the maximum value we have found so far and then we will keep on repeating the same process for all the remaining sub arrays and eventually we would find a pair that contains the maximum product sub array and in this case the answer is actually going to be the 6 times 7 that is 42 and we will have 42 populated as the answer eventually so the brute force way is a very trivial way but it leads to the correct solution so if you are only looking for a solution you will get it using brute force but what are the issues with this one well the issues clearly we can see over here that we will have to iterate over every single sub array that is there and that would lead us to have a time complexity of big o of n square so which is ba very bad because for every single element uh, we will have to iterate over every other elements and then keep on repeating the same process. So the idea is to see that can we find something of a better time complexity. We can actually achieve that using the most important concept inside our computer programming and that is called dynamic programming. Using the dynamic pro programming, we are basically going to have two pointers to store some critical important results and that is going to lead us to find the maximum product sub array. So first let's understand one thing regarding what is being asked. We are trying to find the product. Now we know that for the product, suppose if all the integers are just positive integers, then basically it is the product of all the integers that we need to return, right? But the thing is that is not always the case. We could encounter negative integers and the negative integers leads to very uh, interesting results. The interesting results are that first of all, we suppose in this case, uh, these three values if we do product of them okay the product of these two is six and the six times minus three leads us to minus 18 to be the product over here right the thing is now this value seems very low value because of the negative value but imagine that over here rather than this four being positive if we had a negative four then that is actually going to lead us to have a very beautiful result that if we do minus 18 times minus 4 the answer is going to be plus 72 and that is going to be the maximum product sub array so you see what i'm trying to say the moment we encountered a negative value immediately we found it to have the minimum value but that negative value lead us to have some better consequential results in the future so we don't know that whether we whenever we encounter a negative value we don't know whether we should keep it or not so that is a tricky part that is why we are going to use dynamic programming and we are actually going to use two pointers and these two pointers are going to be that at any given position we are at inside our array we are going to see that up until this point what is the minimum value we have been able to achieve and what is the maximum value we have been able to achieve or basically what i'm trying to say is what is the minimum product we have been able to achieve and what is the maximum product we have been able to achieve and 
every single value, we could have three possibilities. So let me clean this up a bit. At every single value we are at, there could be three possibilities. Either this value could be part of a sub array that leads us to have the maximum product or it could have been a part of a sub array that leads us to have the least value up until this point or this could be the start of a new sub array that leads us to have a maximum product in the future. The idea is at any given position, we are going to check three things. And the three things we are going to check is that up until this point, whatever the minimum value we had, which is which we have stored so far, we are going to multiply this value with this minimum value. We are also going to multiply this value with whatever the maximum value we have able we have been able to store so far. And we are also going to compare this value by itself. So we have basically three values at any given position, the value with the previous minimum value, the value with the previous maximum value and the value by itself. And uh, for all of these three values, we are going to see that what is the minimum value we are able to make, we will store that. What is the maximum value we, be, we are able to make amongst these three values, we will store that as well. And eventually, we would reach to the end of our loop with the maximum value we have been able to generate. And we will have a parameter called uh, answer. And in the answer parameter, whenever we identify a better maximum value, we would populate that. So this is the approach I'm suggesting. Now, let me try to go over an, exa an example. Okay, so suppose this is the example we are have. And now let's try to use dynamic programming in this case with two pointers. So we are going to create two pointers called min and max. And for every single value, we are going to compare it with three values that we are going to compare it with. And we are going to populate these results. We are also going to have a variable called answer. We will update it based on the maximum value we have found so far. Okay, so first value is five. So we offer all the three values. We only have five. We can't compare any with anything. Okay, so the minimum value we have found so far is going to be five. Maximum is also going to be five. And that's it. Now this next value is three. Okay, so now let's see that what are three values that we have to compare. So first value is three by itself. Next value is three times the minimum value. So three times five. Next value is three times maximum value. So again, three times five. So the three values we have is three, 15 and 15. Okay, so now the minimum value amongst these three is going to be three. So we are going to populate that and the maximum value is going to be 15. So we are again going to populate that the answer so far that the best we have received is 15. So we are going to populate that. Okay, now let's get rid of this one. Now again, we are at the next element that is one. So now the three values we have is one, one times whatever the minimum value. So that is three. So the value is going to be three and the one times the maximum value that is 15. Okay. Now amongst these three values, the minimum value we can able to make is going to be one. Okay. So let's populate that and the maximum value is going to be 15. The answer is going to remain the same. Now let's clean this up. Okay. Now things become interesting when we reach to this value nine minus two. Okay. Now the three values we have is going to be minus two by itself then minus two times the minimum previous minimum value. So previous minimum value in this case is one. So minus two times one is going to be minus two and the previous maximum value. So previous maximum value in this case is 15. So minus two times 15 is going to be minus 30. Okay. Now these are the three values we have. And now we are going to see that what is the minimum and maximum value we are able to generate, right? So currently the minimum value we are able to generate is going to be minus 30. So we are going to store that over here. Okay. And the maximum value we are able to generate in this case is going to be minus two. So we are going to store that over here. Okay. Now we are good up until this point. Now this value is zero. So the three values that we have to compare is going to be zero, zero times the minimum value. So that is again going to be the zero and zero times maximum value. That is again going to be the zero. So all three values are zero. So let's put zeros over here. Now again, uh, we are at this value number negative five. So now the three values that we have to compare is going to be negative five and then both of these are zero. So it's going to be zero, zero again. So currently the maximum value we are able to generate is going to be the zero. So we are again going to populate the value with zero and the minimum value we are able to generate is negative five. So we are going to populate the value with negative five. Now the next value is eight. Okay. So now the three values we have to compare is eight, eight times negative five is going to be negative 40 and eight times uh, the zero is going to be zero. Okay. Now, uh, the three values that we have, let's compare them and let's find the minimum value. So minimum value in this case is going to be negative 40. So we are going to put it over here. The maximum value we are going to have is eight. So let's populate that over here. Okay. Now we are at this value number minus three. So with this minus three, we, again, we have three options. So minus three and then minus three times this minus 40, that leads us to positive 120 and minus three times eight, that leads us to minus 24. 
okay so now in this case the minimum value we have so far is going to be minus 24 which is this one and the maximum value we are going to have is going to be 120 and this 120 is greater than this value number 15 so we are also going to update that in our answer and now we have reached to the end of our array so end of our dynamic programming journey so we'll stop here and whatever value we have found in the answer we are going to return this as the answer so in this case answer is 120 that is the correct answer if we see and if we compare this to our brute force well essentially because we are using the beautiful concept of dynamic programming we are completely everything in just one single iteration and all we are doing is just storing couple of variables uh, to store the previously calculated results and comparing different values and that leads us to have the correct answer and find the maximum product subarray in a single iteration which is wonderful if we see time complexity in this case the time complexity is, is, is actually going to be big o of n and the space complexity is actually going to be big o of constant space complexity because apart from storing couple of variables we are not storing any other data so this is a very good time and space complexity to have compared to our brute force approach that had the time complexity of big o of n square which was very bad So first let's take care of some edge cases that if the given number is empty we can simply return 0. So now we will initialize a min variable, a max variable and a result variable. Okay so now let's run a for loop to iterate over our given nums array. Let's initialize a variable called current to keep track of the current variable we are at. Okay now we will have to calculate max and min value. So first let's calculate max value. So this takes care of comparing three values for our max variable. And we are using math.max function two times uh, because that is the way to do it. I think in Python you can do it just without using like two math.max functions. Now let's calculate our min value as well. The thing is for our min value we will also have to use the max value. But since previously we have already calculated our max value it makes no sense for us to use that over here. So what I am going to do is I am going to create a temporary variable and this temporary variable I am going to calculate the max value then for the calculation of min value basically i'm going to use the previous uh, max variable now because this is the temporary variable we will assign this value to max we will also have to keep on updating our result variable as well that's it uh, basically when the loop ends we should have our answer populated in the result variable so let's return that now let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions and uh, I will be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you.